Hello, this is Burn, and if you feel like something's off between you and a guy, and despite how hard you're trying to make things work, things are not going anywhere. And now you're thinking, should I continue investing time in him or cut my losses and run? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna share seven signs you're probably missing when you care about a guy that you're incompatible with. Hello, this is Bern. Welcome to another edition of BernMendez.com. If this is your first time here and you'd like to learn how you can attract your ideal life partner, a conscious man without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, or silly techniques, make sure to hit the subscribe button right now so you can be notified of new episodes as they come out. Listen, if you're watching this video right now, chances are you find yourself in a very painful situation where you really care about someone, but things are just not gelling. It's almost as if you're trying to fit a shoe size five on a foot size seven. In theory, it's possible. You might be able to pull it off, but it always feels like pain. It always feels like something's missing. So the way I want to divide this video up is first ask you a few questions to get you to understand from a more powerful perspective the type of relationship that you are in right now. And the second part of this video will be specific signs that you're probably missing that the more of these signs that are present in your relationship, the more challenging and the more incompatible it is. The first question I'd like to ask you is, do you fundamentally feel better or worse as a result of him being your life? And I'm not talking about the times where he sees you and says beautiful things to you, or maybe he gives you a present, or maybe you make love, but I'm saying if you were to do um, average of the times that you have him in your life, would you say that your life is better or worse as a result of him? The second question is, do you feel more confident as a result of him being in your life? Do you feel more beautiful as a result of him being in your life? Do you feel more unique? Do you feel more loved as a result of him being in your life? Do you believe, you're, you know one of those women who feels and believes that love will conquer all? Because the first thing I like to say about that is it doesn't. Love is an important aspect of our relationship and it's an essential aspect of a romantic relationship, but by no means is it the whole picture. And I know that anything from movies you've watched and novels you've read and even key, uh, Disney stories you paid attention to since you were growing up tell you that love conquers all, but it's not enough. Compatibility and it's, it's part of the gel that makes a relationship sustainable. Are you your best self because of this guy or in spite of this guy? Think about this one. Many of the women I connect with who are in this challenging situation where they really care about someone or they have strong chemistry with them or chemistry and love even, but when they're honest with themselves, they feel like their life would actually progress more in many different ways without him in their life. And, and if that's you, just be aware that that's happening because no one can get inside your head and only you can tell yourself the truth. And if this is happening, you really need to be honest with yourself. Before I share my seven signs, I just want to share that if you want to go further than this short video can share with you right now and understand how you can create a conscious dating strategy so you can attract more quality men into your life, then please go to the first link on the description of this video where you will see a page that looks like this. Enter your name and email and you can start watching my free training right away. And the first sign most women miss that the notes a guy is incompatible with you is his personality type is predominantly opposite from who you are. And let's talk about this. Let's say that you're more of an introvert and he's more of an extrovert. Now, I get that the polarity in this difference could be exciting, but if he predominantly wants to do things on the outside world and he wants to connect with people and he wants to be the life of the party and you genuinely enjoy the silence and solitude of your own space. You need much more recharging in your own confines and you don't really enjoy connecting with groups of people. That's something that regardless of how much you love him, regardless of how awesome he is, how confident he is, how beautiful he makes you feel, might be a strong stain in your relationship because you always have to be fighting to do something that's predominantly opposite to what you want or he might feel like he has to sacrifice a lot in order to be able to be with you. The second one is when his need for physical touch is significantly different from yours. Now, some of the things that I'm sharing right now doesn't mean that the guy is wrong or that he's toxic or that he's bad, it's just different. Right? It might mean that you have a strong sense of physical proximity and touch and he doesn't or that he wants to be close to you constantly and you don't like that. Whenever this is one that can create inordinate amounts of pain if you don't pay attention to it. 
I've connected with women who have confidence and uh, they understand who they are and they connect with guys who are intelligent and they're awesome in many respects. But if the physical aspect of it, which is a great component of chemistry and a great component of feeling loved or feeling unloved or rejected, isn't a match, and I'm not saying it has to be exactly the same, but if it's fundamentally different, you will suffer. I highly suggest that you're in one of these relationships and it's really hard to change your love style where now you don't, just, you don't want as much physical closeness or if you don't like physical closeness, now you really enjoy it. Don't do yourself the painful disservice of being with someone who has a strong difference with you because you will always feel like you're having to give more in a way that's needy or you're always rejected in a way that makes it feel really painful. Number three is, are you fundamentally different in your sense of optimism versus pessimism? And here's what I mean. Maybe you're someone who fundamentally sees this glass as half full and he sees the glass as half empty. Not necessarily a bad thing in and of itself, but through time, it's draining to be with someone who thinks different than you do in that respect. And it might be that he's fundamentally optimistic and you're fundamentally pessimistic. Also, <laughs> something really challenging to, to contend with. Why? Because if you are someone who looks at the brighter side of life, and I'm not saying toxic optimism, but you're optimistic because you're fundamentally connected to gratitude and the fact that life is short and there's great things to feel happy about, even when there's pain around you. And he's someone who's fundamentally sensing that life sucks and he's looking at the worst parts of life and the worst parts of people and expects the worst. That is heavy to contend with. And that one in and of itself might make you incompatible with someone. The next one, which is similar to this one, but slightly different is, are you someone who's predominantly problem oriented or solution oriented? Here's why it matters. When something happens that is not what's expected, and that's the predominantly what life's about. You want something and it happens differently than you want it. Do you have the skill and ability to find solutions to that? Or are you someone who likes to get the juice out of your life, the intensity out of a melodrama or a soap opera of why things can't be done, why things can't happen a certain way? Again, if both of you have a very strong difference of how you view life, I'm gonna solve things versus I just wanna indulge in the problems, again, that similar to optimism versus pessimism might make this an incredibly painful relationship. Number five, are you predominantly empathetic or apathetic? Are you someone who has the capacity to feel other people's pain, other people's heart, and do something about it? If you're someone who has that great capacity and he doesn't, you might feel unseen, you might feel unheard, you might feel unwitnessed, you might feel hurt, because he might say shit that is very painful but doesn't have the capacity to witness and feel your pain, therefore, he's going to continue doing things because he just, just doesn't get it. It just doesn't, it's not in his DNA or vice versa. Maybe he's greatly empathetic and you're not. You're someone who just like, just goes through life and doesn't feel the pain of others. And I mean, when that gap is big, that discrepancy is something that you don't understand why things are happening. It's like the problem that's occurring. It's like you have a pebble in your foot and it feels painful all the time, but you can't see that that's what's happening. You always feel like you're in pain. <laughs> Number six, the difference between somebody who's hungry for growth or somebody who's ambivalent about growth. If you're someone who enjoys evolving, who enjoys growing, who enjoys personal help, who enjoys introspection, who enjoys transformation, who enjoys being more than you were the, yesterday, and you have a vision for where you wanna take your life emotionally, physically, spiritually, and he doesn't. He could be an incredible lover. He can be a very generous human being, but the difference in evolution will make it so that you always feel like you have to dumb down your intelligence, that you have to lessen your light, that you have to grow less quickly so that you don't grow apart. Because if he doesn't want to grow and you're growing, you're going to grow apart. And that's something that's incredibly painful. So when you connect with a man and things are not working, and one of the differences you can identify with the vision of what I'm sharing with you right now is that you like growth and he doesn't, then that's part of the reason why you're feeling this way. Last one that I'll share with you right now, it's by no means the only one. These seven are not the only ones, but these are seven that I find consistently women miss out on is, does he own his baggage or does he expect you to own the baggage for him? So for example, let's say that he's someone who makes mistakes in the way he communicates with you. And instead of apologizing to you, he expects for you to change your sensitivity to be able to handle a rough way of connecting then that's not owning his baggage, right? Or same thing with you. If you're someone who is needy in a way 
and you're showing up, he can't love you more than you love yourself. He can't validate you more than you validate yourself. Wherever this discrepancy is, whether it's you or him, that is not owning your baggage, that makes the relationship pretty incompatible unless you recognize what it is. Now, there's a few things that I'm sharing right now where you can have a witnessing opportunity and create change. Like owning your baggage is something you can grow to do. Wanting more growth is something that you can learn to do, but you either want or you don't. But there's a few other ones. I mean, if you're more optimistic versus pessimistic, if you like physical touch a certain way or don't like it, those are things that are harder to change in human beings because they, they're not just your mindset. They're your mindset, they're your DNA, they're your, the, the way your brain is structured. So make sure when you feel like something's not happening that you recognize if it's something that has grounds to change or if you have better served by not trying to convert someone, metaphorically speaking, to your religion. Hope this is helpful, useful, and insightful. If it is, and you want to grow further than I can share with you in this video, then make sure to go to the first link in the description where you can start watching my free masterclass. If you enjoy the video, please click like or thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and even share with me in a comment below what's the biggest takeaway that you have after watching this video. And last but not least, if you get this feeling that you understand this in your head, and you want to put it into action, but it's really harder than it seems, and you don't want to spend an extra seven years trying to figure this shit on your own, and you want some help in holding, then the second link in the description will allow you to connect with me. If we're a fit, uh, we, I might be able to hold you by the hand and help you create the results you want and attract the man you want in a fraction of the time. Thank you so much for allowing me into your heart, into your phone, into your life, and as always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.